1999, the British Defense Procurement Agency sent requests for quotations for a new man-portable anti-tank weapon to compete in the Next Generation Light Anti-Armor Weapon Program come January 2001 to replace the British Law 80s. Saab Bofors Dynamics MBT Law was selected as the winner over several other offers. Accordingly, the NLAW system program became a British-Swedish joint venture. The Next Generation Light Anti-Tank Weapon, also called MBT Law or RB57, has been in production since 2008 and is used by the majority of forces throughout the Swedish and British armies and thereby constitutes an anti-tank complement to the existing light and crew-operated medium-range systems. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at this weapon and how it is giving Ukraine a helping hand in the ongoing conflict with Russia. Before we get started, if you do enjoy this video and would like to see more just like it, remember to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get more sent straight to your notifications. Main battle tanks have become a very dominant force in armed conflicts. Armed with more sophisticated weapons and countermeasures, they are now an invaluable tool in complex terrain, helping advancing forces to destroy entire buildings to root out the enemy. What was needed was a weapon capable of taking away the tactical advantage of main battle tanks and restoring the balance of power to defending forces. The people at Saab believe the new generation light anti-tank weapon is the weapon for the job. With this weapon, you don't need a platoon to attack tanks. An ordinary soldier can be trained to use the system in an hour. Enlaw eliminates even the most advanced tanks. It is best in class for dismounted light forces that operate in all environments, including built-up areas. This ingenious weapon can also penetrate more than 500 mm armor. The development of both launcher and missile of the Enlaw is carried out at Saab Bofors Dynamics facilities at Eskilstuna and Karlskoga in Sweden using the expertise gained on anti-armor systems such as the Carl Gustav system, the AT-4CS confined spaces weapon, and the Bill anti-tank missile. Whereas the manufacturing of the weapon system is led by the major UK partner Thales Air Defense along with 14 UK subcontractors. Final assembly and test is carried out at the Thales Air Defense facilities in Belfast. The contract signed by all involved was worth approximately 4.8 billion SEK. More than 10,000 units have been produced with an estimated cost of around 33 to 40,000 US dollars and each unit has a shelf life of around 20 years. French multinational company Thales describes the weapon as a low-cost, lightweight, precision strike missile which has been designed to be fired from tactical platforms including fixed or rotary winged unmanned aerial vehicles and surface platforms. The system is designed to provide a rapid reaction to a wide range of surface threats from wheeled or track vehicles, towed artillery or static installations, naval threats from small ships and fast inshore attack craft and an air threat from light aircraft. The Enlaw is a short-range anti-tank missile whose characteristics make it a sort of hybrid. The man-portable fire-and-forget missile system consists of an anti-tank missile stored in a 115 or 150 mm caliber launcher tube built in composite material. The launcher is fitted with the gunner's optical sight, a fold-away launch device, handles and firing mechanism, a battery package, carrying straps, and firing support. It is a portable, shoulder-launched system that can be used by a single operator. Even the NLAW's firing mechanism is a novelty. Instead of an embedded lever or trigger on its launch tube, it has an ergonomic grip mounted to the right side at the front of the launcher tube, behind the bulbous muzzle brake. The NLAW is a single-use weapon system and cannot be reloaded. At a weight of only 11.6 kilograms, the weapon is very light. It is easy to use, disposable, and completely maintenance-free, although the Triacon Compact ACOG 2.5 by 20 sight can be detached and reused if required. Another non-standard in NLAW is the temperature range at which the system operates efficiently. Unlike other competitors in this field, NLAW operates in the temperature range of negative 38 to plus 63 degrees Celsius. 
The Enlaw missile has a length of just over 1 meter, is 150 millimeters in diameter, and has a weight of 12.5 kilograms. It is fitted with an armor-piercing warhead that can destroy heavily protected main battle tanks in a single shot. The oversized caliber shaped charge warhead strikes downward at 90 degrees and is dynamically compensated. It is ignited above the target by the onboard optical and active magnetic sensors. The missile is first launched out of the launcher using a low-powered ignition. After the missile travels several meters into the flight, its main rocket ignites, propelling the missile from there onto the target. Guidance is obtained using a predicted line of sight. The effective range of the missile is from 20 to 600 meters or up to 400 meters for moving targets. It has a flight time of less than 2 seconds out to 400 meters and can be launched at 45 degrees up or down, allowing the gunner to fire from almost any position, from high up in a building, from behind a tree, or from within a ditch. It also has the ability to be fired safely from within enclosed spaces, such as rooms, even with other soldiers present, thanks to its controlled backblast. The maximum firing range is 1,000 meters, beyond which the missile is designed to auto-destruct. Thanks to the fire-and-forget capability, it is unnecessary for the gunner to consider the range to the target. The operator simply tracks the target for a few seconds before firing, and the NLAW does the rest. Fire and Forget is a type of missile guidance that does not require further guidance after the launch, such as illumination of the target or wire guidance, and can hit its target without the launcher being in line of sight of the target. The Enlaw Launcher Tube is fitted with an optical sight with 25 times magnification. But for even better accuracy, night vision and red dot sights are available upon request. For a moving target, the gunner maintains tracking for 3 seconds training the missile's guidance electronics to compute the target's angular speed. After launch, the missile flies autonomously to the target, making the necessary corrections according to the data acquired by the tracking. The NLAW is an unjammable and manned portable system and can be deployed in around 5 seconds by a single soldier day or night. The system is also extremely effective when the operator can only see a tiny portion of the target. The operator can simply aim at the visible part and fire. The missile will travel 1 meter above the line of sight before it takes the tank out from above. The ideal mix of predicted line of sight guidance and overfly top attack delivers easy handling, great accuracy, and high kill probability every time. Since 2009, the Enlaw has found an eager clientele with significant orders from Finland, Indonesia, Luxembourg, Malaysia, Switzerland, and the Ukraine. And of course, the people who manufactured and designed the weapon, Sweden, and the UK. Preceding the escalation of the Russian-Ukraine war by the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine, the United Kingdom supplied 2,000 NLAW systems to Ukraine, with another 1,615 delivered by the 9th of March, 2022, to bolster Ukraine's military. More NLAWs were requested by the Ukrainian military following reports that they proved highly effective against Russian vehicles, leading to at least 100 more being allocated by Luxembourg. On the 24th of March, 2022, the UK pledged to deliver a further 6,000 NLAWs, and a senior Ukrainian military officer also claimed they were the weapon of choice for his troops, responsible for 30 to 40 percent of Russian tanks destroyed. The missiles have succeeded in Ukraine, despite efforts to defeat them. The Russian military has said, and Pentagon leadership believed, that a defense system on the newest T-90 tanks was capable of sensing and destroying anti-tank missiles like NLAWs in flight. In an apparently new countermeasure, Russian troops are welding improvised cages of parallel steel bars atop tank turrets. Video evidence, however, has shown both defenses have failed. Given that Ukrainians are unable to fight Russian armor with tanks of their own, they must use different tactics, and they have shown the will and the extraordinary nerve to get close to tanks and destroy them in these missile attacks. They are fighting an existential threat, and with a little help from the NLAW, it makes that fight just a little bit easier. It's not always the size of your army that counts but how you use the tools you are given to fight that war. What do you think of the NLAW anti-tank missile? 
Are there any other feats of engineering you'd like to see us cover? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get our latest videos straight to your notifications. Thanks for watching.